Well, hello friends. I have been challenged this year to see growth in my own prayer life and to make it more meaningful and effective. I'm happy to have mentors that are leading us in this direction. In these days, I am more and more overcome with the weakness of humanity and the worthiness of Christ. These two words, weakness and worthiness, do not exactly appear together in Bible verses, but I did find that they are thrown together in context quite often. Revelation 5 and verse 12 says, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. We can agree that Christ's worth existed independent in eternity, but in this passage, his leading credential of worthiness is presented as his willingness to become a weak, helpless lamb to buy our redemption. In 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says, Christ crucified was the power of God. That didn't make any sense to the Jews because Christ crucified to them was a stumbling block. The cross was parked across their way, but they were looking for an all-powerful, conquering Messiah to usher back their political freedom. The cross was shameful and confusing and inconvenient. It didn't make any sense to the Greeks either because Christ crucified to them was foolishness. Jesus could have used his debate skills or storytelling abilities and leadership skills to really to go places. To them, he should have just pandered to the people that could make him rich and famous. But 2 Corinthians 13 verse 4 says, He was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. When did the apostles receive this power? It was not when they were debating which of them should be the greatest or sit at the right hand of Christ in the kingdom. No, it came in a time when they were unified in the knowledge that they were weak and unworthy and wholly unequipped to do one more thing as a disciple of Christ until that promised gift was given. In Acts chapter 2, just before the fire fell, it says that they were all in one accord, meaning in essence unified, blended, and reconciled. When they had fully recognized their weakness and they were ready to put Christ in his worthy place, that was when the power was given. And so today in our weakness, he is worthy to grant to us the Holy Spirit for our daily walk and calling. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. It seems we will always come up lacking and weak, but he will always come up worthy and powerful and capable of increasing not our strength, but his through us. I am stunned how often through scripture and the life of Christ, weakness is tied to power and strength and the worthiness of God. Check it out. I think that you will be impacted as well. God bless you and make you weakly worthy.